In this demo, we'd like to show all the flights which are around um, a given location, let's say on a given distance. So for this, we'll use uh, um, a service which is provided by flight and rather 24.com. This is able to show all the flights around my location, let's say, and we'll give it we we'll give it a try, but basically we will try to to get the information from the site. And in order to do so, uh, we will use the API. And in here we have a blog which is documenting the API. So, for instance, we we see that we are able to get all the instances which provides data about the flight and so on. So, first of all. Let's go to, to, to Eclipse and create a new Fuse project. So I'll just create a Fuse project and it will be using Java language. So let's call my project demo for the group ID. The artifact should be radar because, because I'm showing, I'm implementing a flight radar, let's say. Now it's building the project with Maven and in the end, I see that I have a problem with the path because by default it's assigned the Java 1.6, but I don't have it, so I have a newer version. Okay, basically here I have my route builder and my, not my application, let's call it main application. That's fine, and this should be main route builder. Okay, so we said that we need to display all the flights around a given location and for that I will just create a property file in which I will specify those keys. So I will just create another file, simple, simple file. Come on, it should be a file. Okay, and I will just call it main application.properties and in here I will just uh, define the latitude, the longitude, the distance and we will implement a web application so I will say what should be the default value for the port. In order to do that uh, I will just go to Google Maps. Of course I can search the web for the location but in my case, I will just point it out to a given location. Let's say this one. And I have the latitude and the longitude accordingly. So I just go and put my values in here. Okay, so this should be the latitude, the longitude. And let's say because it is early in the morning, let's say the distance should equal to 100 kilometers. Okay. In order to read those values, I will just create here a private static final resource bundle field. Come on, resource bundle. Let's call it let's call it bundle. And I will just get the resource bundle for this class, which is main application dot class. I will get the name of the class because the file has the same name as the class and it's located in the same package. Okay, and now when I'm creating my route, I will just, I mean my route builder, I will get a double value for the latitude that should be passed with double, passed double, and from my bundle I get a string which should be the latitude. I'll do the same for the rest of the values by defining the longitude and use the longitude key for that the distance as well and in the end I'll get the port but this one should be an integer rather than a double that should be the port and of course I will use the integer parse int 
of the bundle get string with the name of the key port. In the end, I will create the route with those values, the latitude, okay, the longitude, distance, and port. And now I'm just creating the constructor with this signature in my route. <coughs> and of course, I will just define some fields in order to store these values these values okay so this should be a field in my class the longitude as well sorry for having to write some boiler code just to fire up the infrastructure of the application that should be the distance and in the end we will have the port come on so the port should be also a field. Now that we have all this, let's write our route. So basically, we will periodically ask for the for the data. That means that we'll start with the timer. So we'll start with the timer. Let's call it all because it's going to pull the data, for the data. And we'll use a fixed rate, fixed rate timer, let's say, with a period of one second. And we want to have no delay in starting the timer. So each second we will be asking for the data. In order to ask, we need First of all, let's uh, let's um, catch and treat the exceptions. So I'll register a global exception handler for a generic exception. And each time I will have an exception, I will just log it. So I will just write it to the log. I will, I will route the, the, the exception to the log. And in this case, I will just display the whole body of the exception. And because I'm trying to do something that might throw an exception, I will just do a try. That will be globally handled by the generic, by the global on exception handler. So what I'd like to do, first of all, as you can see from here, first, in order to, to call the service, we have an endpoint, which is load balancer. So before actually getting the real data, we need to, to uh, check what is the instance with lower um, workload, with lower uh, activity. So basically, we'll do uh, a call, and for that we will send a header, which will be the HTTP method to get, because we are just invoking uh, that URL, and then because the timer will generate an event, an exchange, but with a body that's empty, we don't like to get a null pointer exception. So in order not to to do that, we will set the body to a, set the body. Uh, first of all, as you can see, when I'm setting the header, it 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 expects to have an expression we should be evaluated for each exchange, but this is just a constant. In order to use a constant expression, I will just write here a constant expression with the, the constant function. So I will set the body, set the body, also to a constant expression, which will be an empty string. And then I can invoke the URL. So I will just send it to this URL. In the end, I will get a stream, but I'd like to convert this stream to a string, convert to a string, because I need to read all the response. Then I'd like to deserialize it. So we'll just, I will just unmarshal. And I will unmarshal it to JSON. And I will use a JSON library of type Jackson to do that. But up to now, 
I use the default HTTP client, but actually I should use Jetty rather than, than the default. And I also need to have a dependency to the Jackson library. So, so let's go to our project object model file and add those dependencies. So first of all, let's define a property that should be camel.version. Come on, I don't have the value for the property. So first of all, I should go to the already uh, added dependencies, copy the value for the camel, camel um, runtime, but rather than using this value, I will define a property for that. So now I can go in here and create my property camel.version with the appropriate value. Now I can save it. And of course, I will also have to spell it correctly in here. Okay. And then I'll also, I'd like to use the same version for the test. So that should be camel.version. Okay. And now I can add my new dependencies to the artifacts from camel that will have the group ID org.apache.camel. The, the artifact ID should be camel minus jetty and the appropriate version that's a variable, that's a property camel.version. Come on. And now I can save it and it will build it with Maven as well. I said that I will use Jackson and for that I will add a dependency to camel.apache to org apache camel to camel minus Jackson with the same camel version. And now I'm ready to use it in my route. Actually in my route builder. So I do the invocation, I deserialize the result as JSON. But from the result, I would like to extract the host and of course the workload. So if I go to this URL in the browser, I see that I get something like this. So there's, there's no need for a special viewer. I can just uh, interpret the data myself. So that's just the instance and the number of uh, requests for that instance. So what I'd like to do would be to choose the, the instance with the less workload. So for for that, we should first we should uh, split the the body, okay, and we should create a model for this. So let's create a new class. Let's call it load balancing instance. The balancing instance. So this will will uh, have the information about a load balancing instance. As you can see, it has a private field for the URL. It should have a field for the URL. It's also uh, an, an integer for the workload, let's say. Okay, so I will just create a constructor with these fields. And, okay, I will just generate for this getters and setters okay but only i will just generate only getters that should be the last member in my class and then i'll just format this okay with this model i'd like to be able to extract um, all the instances from the response all the load balancing instances so i have to create a static method which will return a list of load balancing instances let's call it extract it will get the result of the parsing which in here would be what JSON library would create from this and because as you can see in the HTTP and in the JSON response this is a map with a key containing the, representing the name of the instance, the host, and the value that's the workload of the host. So I will get a map here with the key that's a string and the value that's an object, let's say. And this should be what I get as input. 
Now, what I like to do would be to create a list of load balancing instances. Let's call it instances. And I will just create a new array list of this. And I only have to iterate through all the keys in my map. So I will just get the key set of the map. And then I'll just get the value for the workload by just converting to integer the map dot get of key because I know that's an integer. So in the end, I will create a load balancing instance. Let's call it instance with the key as URL and the workload. And then I will just add this to my list of instances, returning in the end this list of instances. OK, so this method is actually extracting as a model the result. But then what I need to do would be to split this. OK, so first of all, I will just uh, call this bin, which would be my load balancing instance class, the method extract. OK, and then I'll just split this by the body because I have a list in the result <coughs> and as you can expect, this will replace the body of the input with what is produced by, produced by the extract method. So then my body will just be a list of uh, load balancing instances and I can split this list by itself. Now that I have all the, um, the instances loaded, what I'd like to do would be to aggregate those so that um, my when I aggregate those, I will just um, select the best instances to be called. OK, but in order to do that, I will need to uh, group all the instances in a batch so that I know when the batch should finish and what should be the result for, for a batch because I will have multiple exchanges created by the timer and for each exchange I do a split of the response and for each split I would like to have only one result with the best instance regarding the load. In order to, to be able to do that I will create a public method that should be a static one which will return a string and it will create let's say the batch ID for the exchange. It will get a, not an exception, but it will get as input the exchange. Okay, and it should create a batch ID. Basically, I don't need, even need to have the exchanges parameter, although it is injected automatically. The idea is that I will generate a random uniform unique identifier just by getting an URU ID and I will get a random one and convert the ID to string. So what I'd like to have here would be to assign to the message that enters as a response of the HTTP call, I'd like to assign it an ID. So the ID should be, uh, the ID should be unique, okay? So before, actually um, splitting it, just before splitting it, I make sure that I set a header with the name ID and the value will not be a constant, but rather will, would be a result of calling a method from the class main route builder and the name of the method is get batch. You know what, I just copy this to make sure I'm not spelling it wrong. Okay, so now that I split the body, I have multiple messages, one for each load balancing, one for each load balancing instance, 
and I would like to aggregate those. So I'll, I'll aggregate and I'll create a new load balancing instance aggregation strategy. I need to create this class and it will implement the aggregation interface, the aggregation strategy interface. It will get an exchange that is the old exchange and another one which is the new exchange that needs to be aggregated together. Okay, when I go back to my route, I will say, please aggregate this based on the header ID and the name of the header is ID and do it with a completion timeout, let's say one second, because I do a new invocation each second. So this means that all the messages which enters this, all the exchanges that enter this aggregation uh, composite needs to be aggregated by the same value for the header. So that's why I set the header just before actually uh, doing the split so that all the results of the split, all the messages that are splitted will have a copy of the same ID and I can use this ID to group them together up to one second in time. If the time elapsed, then the, the result will be sent and the other messages will be grouped in a new in, in a new group uh, eventually. So this is not actually what what I'm expecting to happen, but uh, let's say that it will be able to group them uh, up to one second. Normally should happen in even in, in a, on a slower computer. So basically, my aggregation strategy would have to select the best instance regarding the workload, the one with the lowest workload to be invoked. When the aggregation is done, first of all, it will invoke the aggregate method with a null value for the old exchange. By the way, this should be called exchange. And having the, the new exchange as uh, the, the first as being the first in the group. So if the old exchange is null, then I only need to return the new exchange because what I'm doing, what I'm doing with this aggregation would be to select the best instances to be called. So because now I have the first instance um, in the sequence, I just say this should be the result of the aggregation. This should be what I am expecting to have. Otherwise, I will just try and see, first of all, I have an old load balancing instance that's in my old exchange. So the aggregation goes like this. For the first element in the group, it will call the aggregate method with a null value for old exchange and the, the first value for the new exchange in the group. I returned that, that first value in the group and then when it has to aggregate the second value, it will call the aggregate method with that first result and the new element that, ne that needs to be aggregated to the sequence. So what I have to do here, I will just get the old instance from the old exchange just by calling get in met method to access the in uh, message and get body as a load balancing instance. Now that I have that, I will need to get the new load balancing instance from the new exchange. And this would be the new instance of the new exchange. Now, I only have to, let's say, define a method and select between, between those two and replace the old balancing instance, let's say old instance, should be old instance select between with the new instance and in the end I will get an old, the old exchange and replace the body 
with the old instance, returning the old exchange. I don't have this method implemented, I need to do it here. So what I have to do in order to select the best instance would be to return a comparison, a comparison between the endpoints workload. So let's say I will compare the new instance workload if it's uh, if this is lower than my workload then I will return the new instance otherwise I will return this okay so in this way I'm returning um, I, I'm returning the instance with the lowest workload okay so my route up to now it's able to do a call peri periodically and get all the available instances to return the information from the service and select the best instance regarding the lowest workload. Now that I have this, I would need to uh, invoke this, okay? And for that, as you can expect by um, having this, the name of the host to be invoked, with this I can get additional information. Of course, there is no need for a load balancer to get a list of airports or the airlines because they don't change. So this is only one edge node to, to get this data. But in order to get information about the flights, of course, I can get, as you can see here, also details about the zones. Nevertheless, to get information about the slides, I will have to address my call to a particular load balancer. So I have a load balancing instance that's the lowest in uh, workload after this. And now I have to make a call to that instance. Okay, so in order to do so, I will set the header of the call to be the, for the HTTP method to be a constant with the value get. I also have to set the body because I don't like to, uh, to send an attachment to this call. Basically now in the body I have the load balancing instance that was selected by the aggregation strategy. So I don't like to, to, say a to, to send a payload to this that's why I'm just erasing the body, like, like so. But as you can see, um, my endpoint is variable and it depends on the instances that were selected by the route. So for that, I will just set a header with the name host and the value should be extracted as a simple expression because I have the value for the header in the body of the input that would be the URL. So in order to evaluate this expression, I will use the simple evaluator for the simple expressions. And I just say, assign the value to host to be the property URL of the body. Because my body at this point, it's a load balancing instance. And this has a property called URL, which has a public getter. I only have to, to say here in my route, set the value for the host to be the property URL of my load balancing instance that's called by the body. Now, that I do that, I'll use the recipient list to deliver this to, uh, to a dynamically cre created URL, dynamically created endpoint, and I'll use the same simple predicate expression evaluator in order to construct the URL. So I will use Jetty to do the call. And now let's get the URL. The URL should look like this. It should be, uh, I'll just copy this text. So I'll paste it in here. For load balancer, I set the value of the header called host. So I'll just use the header dot host. I can ask for the 
full zones for the all uh, flights that are uh, on the air right now but let's say we are just limiting our search to Europe and I will, I will make sure that my location should be inside Europe which is the case for the value as the value I set before so I'm just asking the load balancer instance to get me the flight information about all the flights in Europe. Now I have to read the response, so I'm just converting the result to string. Then I need to deserialize the value. So I will just unmarshal it. Come on, I'll unmarshal this as JSON because the response will be JSON and I will use the same Jackson library for the, the JSON parser. But let me show you how the response looks like. So let's let's get an instance and do the call with that instance. So now I have let's say I will pick this one and I will just ask this to get me all the available information about the flights in Europe. This is the response, but it's it's quite heavy. So I will just use a JSON online viewer, JSON, come on, JSON online viewer, and I'll just paste it in here. Wait a little bit and then try to have the viewer displayed. And in here, as you can see, I have a, um, a map which is indexing the data by the, the ID of the flight. And for a flight, I get some uh, basic data like the latitude, the longitude, perhaps this is, I don't know, I don't care for that, but I'm pretty sure that this would be the flight number, so this is human readable, this is the information by which we search the flight, okay? So that's all, I have no details about uh, where the flight originated, what, uh, where should it go, and so on, so in order to get these details, I will have to send a sequential, uh, a subsequent request for each flight to an uh, endpoint, to an URL, that's gonna return the details about the flight. That's nasty, because I have, in the end, if you, if you look at this response, you can see that I have almost 5,000 flights that's up in the air right now in Europe. That's a lot, and if I try to do uh, 5,000 calls to, to get details for each flight, that, that's impossible to handle by what I, I like to display. Because the response should be displayed as a web, by web socket to a web application. So that's not possible to do all the requests in the background unless the application will not refresh in real time. So the problem here would be, of course, to limit our search, to narrow the search to only flights that are around a given location. That, that's what we intended in the beginning, so that's no problem with this. Okay, but let's focus on what we are doing. So now that I have the, the response deserialized, I'd like to extract it using a model, but also then to filter all the flights and let them go through this only for those who are um, near to, to my location. In order to do that, I will just assign a batch ID for this, because in the end I would like to aggregate those as well. So let's assign another batch ID with the same method that will be generated by the same method. Okay, and now that I have this, I'd like to deserialize um, to a model. Let's create a new class, call it flight. Okay, and the flight will have to, to store data, like for instance, we have a code that's a string, and then I said that we'll need to have the latitude, which will be a double. But then I also have the longitude, which will be a double as well. Okay. Then 
I need to have a string that should be the number of the flight, not the internal code. And in the end, I would like to enrich this data with information about where the flight originated, where it should go, to which airport I mean. Why not? I'd like to know what is the name of the airline to which it belongs. And why not? In the end, I'd like to know which is the device, I mean the aircraft, the type of, of, the, uh, of the plane. Okay? And why not displaying also an image with the flight? I mean, uh, uh, not a selfie taking, taken uh, from the cockpit, of course, to the pilots, but the image of the model of the aircraft. So that will be generic and will be selected depending on the type of the aircraft. And what is uh, important for this would be the distance to, to the target. Okay, so this should, should be uh, available as well. And now I'd like to create a constructor. So I'll go to source create constructor using fields. But I don't like to have all the fields, so I, I will uh, deselect all. I need to have the code, the latitude, the longitude and the number. These are the fields which are available from my first call. Okay, so I will expect to set, to create a flight with this information in a row. So first, when I, when I get the data, I will pass it and create something like this. But then, imagine that I will do a second call, and with my second call, I will set some additional details for the flight. So let's just create the method in here, because we will need it at some point. Set details. And my details would cover the origin, original airport, the destination, so the source, the, tar the, the target, and then also the airline, the aircraft, aircraft. Okay, so some information like this one. Come on, there should be a new line. Okay, the aircraft. Why not? I said um, the image and the double for the distance. Okay, so I'll just copy these values into my internal fields of the class. Uh, also, airline should be airline. Come on, airline. Aircraft should be aircraft image as well, and eventually the distance. Okay, now I'd like to have getters for all those, so I will just go to source and I will create getters only getters as being the last member in my class. Okay, so this is what I need to, to have in order to fill the information. But I will need to have uh, a setter for the distance because actually the distance, this is wrong here, the distance won't be returned by the enrichment, but rather by the filter. So the distance will need to have a setter. So I'll just locate the getter and write a setter almost myself. Come on, I, I wanted to say set image. Set, not set image, but set distance, sorry. Okay, so now that I have all this, I said that I would, li I would like to have a method to extract the flights. So let's define here a, a static method, public static, which will return a list of flights. Come on, a list of flights. Let's call the method extract. And this will return what, what, what's going to be returned by parsing this, by the parser, the JSON parser. So as you can see, this contains a map. So there should be a map with the key of type string and the value that should be an object. And this should be a map. Okay. Now, 
what I have to do would be to create a list of slides, let's call it slides, and an instantiate an array list of type of slide. In the end I'll return these slides, but in between I would like to iterate through all the keys in my map. So for each key in map.keyset, the key I know that's the code of the flight. First let's get the value that corresponds to my key. Because the problem is that not all the keys return the same value. As you can see in here, most of them does return the same value, the same format, but I do have two additional keys which returns a number. Okay, so I'll have, I don't care about this, but I will have to make sure that I'm not parsing them with the same model. So in case the value is not an instance of list, because as you can see here, I'll just continue. Uh, as you can see, the value that corresponds to a field, to a, to a key, it's a, it's a list, except for those two in the end. Okay, so therefore, I said that if, if it's not a list, I don't care about it. Okay, then let's get a list of objects and call this list. Come on, not last, but list. Okay, so I'll just convert our cast actually to a list of objects the value and I'd like to suppress the unchecked warning I know that's a list of values. Let's then define an alias for the key because this is the code of the airplane. Now let's just get the latitude by passing by casting actually to double and let's see what is the, the index. So index one should be for the latitude. So get of one would be the latitude. Come on, the longitude on the other hand would be the next one, so of index 2. Now I'd like to get the number of the flight, which would be a string. I cast it to a string. And if I look here, I see that the number of the flight is on position 7. Okay? Then I'll just create a flight with this information, okay, and I just have, have to add my flight to the list of flights. Okay, so now I passed all the information that I need from the response by calling, uh, first I didn't do that, but I have to do it. So I just wanted to, to say that after deserializing the, res the response and assigning a value an ID for the batch, I will need to extract this and I will call a bin in my flight class called extract to pass the model. That's extracting the data and I will get a list, a list of flights. After that, I need to split this, it's a list, so I'll just split it by the body and as a result, I will have multiple exchanges containing each flight on an exchange. But then I need to filter this because I don't care about all the flights, but rather about those that are in the proximity of the, uh, of the target. Okay, so I, I create a new, let's say, flight filter predicate. Okay. And this is going to filter my, my values. I have to create this class, but rather than ex extending an expression, I would like to implement a predicate in order to do that. The predicate should be the one from camo. And of course, this will get the exchange as input, and it will have a method to say whether or not the input is matching the predicate. It's matching the, the criteria, criteria of the predicate. Okay, so basically what I need to have would be to, to filter based on the properties set here. So I will filter them by the latitude, the longitude, and the distance. And I need to create 
come on, I need to create the constructor with this signature. Okay, so when I'm creating the filter, I will pass this as, as um, parameters for the constructor and I will just store these values as a field in my class. That should be used in order to, to filter according to that location. Okay, so now I have to focus on filtering this. Yeah, in order to do that, I need to compute on a sphere the distance between two points. And I took the implementation, I took the liberty to, to, uh, to get the implementation of the method from uh, Android SDK, in which there is a class that contains a method to compute the distance on a sphere on the Earth's surface between two points based on their um, uh, GPS coordinates. So I just paste the code in here and you can find it uh, if, you, if you look at the Android SDK. So what this is the, the uh, radius of the, of the Earth. So this will return the distance between two points based on their latitude and longitude but the distance would be in meters. So here, what I need to do in my method, in my matches method, first of all, would be to extract the flight from the route. So my exchange contains as input a flight. Okay, and then I will need to compute the distance of this flight by calling the distance between and I have a latitude in my class, a longitude, which is the fixed point but then I will need to get the latitude from my flight and then the longitude as well. So I'm just computing these values, okay? Now I'd like to set the distance for my flight to be this value, because in the end, if it will be filtered and it will go through the, the route, I will have to display this value as well. But the distance should be um, should be set in kilometers. And now I filter my result, and when I do the filter. I also need to make sure that I will let through all the flights which has which have a, a code unless uh, I like to, to be able to get additional information by that code. So I do the filtering on this as well. But then I do the filtering on the distance. That's a parameter in the class. Okay, so I need to have the, the code set and I should filter on this as well. But since I'm, do, I'm already doing a filtering in here, I would like to filter on the code also. So I say, let's return through, let them, them, them go through this filter for all the flights which have a code that's not null and which are in the proximity of this point. Okay, now that I have my uh, flights filtered, I need to, to make sure that I aggregate this. But before aggregating, I would like to sort this. Okay, so I'd like to sort this by the proximity, by the distance. In order to sort of flow of uh, exchanges, I'll do a resequence, resequence, and I'd like to resequence them by the distance. So I'll just use a simple expression here that would sort them, that will resequence them based on the distance. That's a property of the body. Now that I have, I have them sorted, resequenced, I do an aggregation and I create the flights 
aggregation aggregation strategy strategy sorry I create this class which will implement the aggregate interface this is the old exchange that's the new ex new exchange okay because the idea goes like this for each pause of the timer I invoke the load balancer just to get the best instances to address the call to get data about the flights but then I deserialize the flights and for each call for each call I will have multiple flights but in the end I would like to aggregate the result with all the flights which are in the proximity of the fixed point and so that I will have only one response for one call of the timer okay so my aggregation strategy would have to take into account the header so it would be on this ID of the batch with a completion timeout as being the same value as uh, the, the period of the timer okay I don't have to expect uh, I don't have to wait longer than that but then my aggregation strategy would have to take care of creating a list of flights so let's see how we should do this aggregation if the old exchange is null this means that I have only uh, this that's the first element that needs to be aggregated first of all I know for sure that inside my new exchange I'll have all the time of flight because that's what I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm getting in the round okay so I get the body and I say this should be a flight for sure okay then if the new the old exchange is not then it's the first flight to be aggregated and I need to create a list with all the flights. Let's call this flights. I will create this list and I need to add to this list my first flight, which is already available. Then I need to set for the old for the new exchange, sorry, because this is what is the exchange that's not null. I need to get the input message and set the body instead of being the flight to be the list of flights in which I'm collecting all the flights and then I'm just returning the new exchange otherwise this, this means that this will happen the second time the third time and so on I know for sure that I have a list of flights which were set by was set by myself in the body of the old exchange so if I get the input of the old exchange I can get the body as a list not last but list and I will just suppress the unchecked warning then I only have to add to this list the new flight and return the old exchange I don't have to care about replacing the body return the old exchange I don't have to care about replacing the body of the old exchange because I'm just adding to a list so the, the, the head of the list should be already set so this is how I aggregate the flights I just create a list and add them to that list okay now let's focus on the route after that so after the result would be completed so when I aggregate the result okay I will have all the flights that needs to be serialized so in order to do that I will just uh, marshal the response as JSON using the JSON library Jackson to, to marshal it and I will deliver this to a web socket and I will just call a web come on, a web socket let's call this flights uh, and I will just send this to all 
listeners. Okay. In order to use the WebSocket, I need to add this component is in my project object model as dependency, and it will have a group ID of type of value org Apache Camel, and the artifact would be Camel not like Camel minus web socket and the value should be camel dot the version should be camel dot version now when i save this it will get the dependence i need to configure in my route builder i need to configure configure this component so i need to configure the web socket component let's call it component i have to access by the context, the camel registry, and get the component which is registered for the schema web socket. This I know for sure is going to return a web so come on, a web socket component. Okay, so with this component, I need to set some properties as the port. And the value of the port it's a parameter in the class but i also need because i'm implementing a web application that should be a static resource and delivered to the to the uh, delivered by the websocket component i need to set the static resource set static resource come on i don't need to use ssl but i would rather set the static resource path and for this i will set the class path class path to be uh, relative to, to this project. So I only have to put my resources in the main resources folder if I do like this. Okay, that's, that's nice. We are all already, we are almost there. But we forgot to do something. We need to, in, to enrich each flight with um, additional information. Be careful. We don't need to enrich all the flights with location of the from and to airport and so on, but rather we would like to enrich all the flights that pass to, through, the, through this filter. So after filtering them, we don't care about this sequence, so it doesn't matter. It could be uh, it could be uh, before or after. But after filtering them, we'd like to enrich all the flights with additional information. So we call the en enrich uh, processor to do that. We will have the, a direct route, let's call it flight, which will be in, uh, in memory. And we create a new flight aggregation strategy to aggregate the additional information. Let's create this class. This should be the old exchange, which contains the flight information. This should be the new exchange, which will contain the additional information, and we need to do the aggregation. But first, let's take care about this route. So what we do actually here, <coughs> for each flight which passes through this, <coughs> sorry, we need to add a new, uh, we, add, we need to add additional information, okay? Let's create a route in order to do that. So this should be a consumer for the flight endpoint. And when we consume this, okay, we need to, to try and catch the exceptions as we did for the previous one. We need to, to do a call. So if you look at the site describing how you should consume this, you see that after getting the information about the flights, you can get additional information about the flight if you go to a new, to a new URL like this. So the same load balancer, but this will need the flight code. So if we go here, we need to do an HTTP call. So we set the header for the HTTP method to be a get. Then we need to, to set the query parameter. So we set additional header and there is an HTTP query parameter. 
but this time we'll use a simple expression to set it, it's not a constant, it, it depends on the input. So as you can see from this, this should be f equals to the code of the flight. So f equals, and I can get the value of the code just by simply saying body.code. But then we also need to set the body of the request to be a constant because what will go to this route would be a flight. So I don't need to serialize the flight. I don't care about sending the data about the flight. I need to send the code of the flight and an empty body. Okay, I already, I already uh, set a header in my route for the host and it will be inherited also by this flight message since it was passed as a result of the route. So I will, all, I will have this value. Then I send to a recipient list just to send to a dynamic URL and this URL should be injected, should be set by a simple expression, as a simple expression. So it would be, we need just to copy this. So let's go and copy this URL, paste it in here, okay. Let's split it just to, to be fairly visible. I don't need to, to put this because the query is set by the header. But the load balancer should be obtained in my body. In, sorry, in my header, I have a property called host. Okay, so with header.host, I get uh, the URL of the load balancer, the name of the host for the load balancer. So I'm doing this call and I need to convert the result to string. Oh, this should be line up here. Okay, then I unmarshal the result as JSON. Let me look at the result. So let's go here and just take this as parameter, but I have the URL already in my clipboard so I just take this value which is the code of the flight and put it in here uh, okay so I don't have the load balancer I need to, to take the load balancer as well so I'll just take this value and then I'll just replace this in here and now I can invoke the service okay so this is the result after invoking the service I'll just go to my JSON online viewer and I'll just try to see how it looks like. If I go to my viewer, I see that I have the airline, the aircraft, okay? Yeah, so that's not nice. Okay, I should take another one because this one doesn't have all the data I need. Let's just take this one. Okay, maybe let me do a, another try. Maybe this one. Okay, so, so if I invoke this. Okay, if I go in here and I'll try to view this in a better way. Oh. Um, some information is not displayed because the, the first flight uh, doesn't have it. But the next one does however it was not properly displayed by the viewer so i'll just close the viewer it was not refreshed by the viewer i'll open it again paste the new data and then display so as you can see we have information about where it, it originated like uh, uh, from city and from uh, from city also contains the code and so on from position to city and it also contain, contains a trail. If you like to draw the route of the flight, we can do it with uh, information about uh, latitude and longitude and altitude as well. Nevertheless, we don't care about this. And the trail is a stack. I believe this is the last position. And if I try to go all the way up here, you see that in the beginning it, it's originated by sending a uh, uh, GPS position with an altitude of opposite 80 meters. Okay, no problem. So I deserialize this 
and I'll just say JSON library dot Jackson and in the end I need to aggregate this so when I aggregate I will receive the input message which, which was containing a flight and the additional information obtained by this route which will be of type JSON object but rather we'll have to check how this looks like so if you look in here it's a map with properties and values okay so let's go into our flight aggregation strategy which is the one that's going to aggregate the information about the flight so first of all we know for sure that we put a flight in the old exchange so we get the old come on we get the old exchange get in message get body and for sure this was a flight of class come on then the aggregation actually would have to take care about getting the additional information from uh, the extent from the uh, enrichment route we'll get a map with the keys of value string and uh, object value generic object value let's, let's call it map so we, we took the new exchange we get the in message and we get the body as being a map okay so we suppress the warning about unchecked now that we have this we only need to get the from and our map contains a key called from city we just have to look at this okay so we have a from city here we have a two city as well so we just get this and this will be the from we need to cast this to a string next we set the two okay we also have to get the airline information and we have a field called airline in here if you look here you see that we have an airline somewhere okay the airline the aircraft and the image so the airline come on the aircraft the aircraft and eventually the image so we return the old exchange because this is containing the flight but before that we set details about the flight with this information okay so this is all what what we need to do now we aggregate the, the data we've serialized the data we only need to create the client here so we'll, we'll create a new a new file let's call it index.html and this is going to be our client application let's go to the source viewer of this and it's an empty file okay that's that's for sure let's create an html which will have a header and a body and in the body i will just put a placeholder there's going to be a div with an id let's call it out and i will just create a table in here as for the header, I will include a script. Oh, a script, I mean. And this script, in order to manipulate the DOM, I will need jQuery. So I will just search for jQuery, not like this, but rather the text. Okay, jQuery. And if I go to the download page, I'm just copying the link to download jQuery. To, to be included by the script directly from the URL and I also include the script I will create a um, I will create a controller for the page that's going to be called index as the page is called index so now I create here 
a new file, call it index.js, and this is going to be my application actually. So this actually will use jQuery and will just define a function in here with jQuery parameter. When the DOM is ready, so when the document is loaded on DOM ready, I will call a function. Okay, and by this function, I'll create a socket variable and I will create a new web socket which will have the, the URL starting with the WS slash slash. The, the URL should be absolute, so I will use the location header, which location host, which also contains the port. And then I need to append to this the URL where the route is delivering the response. So if I go in here, I can see that it will be delivered to flights. Okay, so then I go to my index, I just close the rest, and I just get this from the flight. So now my my route will listen to this. My socket will listen to this. On message, when I receive a message, I have a function that will receive the message. And what I do, what I will get from the, the host, from the server, it will be a list of flights. So let's create a variable called flights, and I will use JSON to parse the message contain, contains a property called data. So this will be actually the, the payload. So now I pass the result. I need to create an HTML. Okay, so let's create an HTML by hand. My HTML will be a table. So I just create a table. Let's, let's say that the border should be zero. The cell spacing should be zero as well. But the cell padding, the distance between uh, the content and the, the border should be, let's say, five pixels. In the end, I will append the end of the, the closing tag for the table. And with jQuery, I will search for uh, a tag with the ID out, which is my, my div. And I will just set the HTML to be what I collected. Okay, but in between, I will iterate through all, through all the flights and, and then set construct the table. But first, let, let's add a header to the table. Okay? And in here, I will add the table header with the alignment to be left. Okay? And let's... Uh, put it in bold, first would be the image. Let's say we display first the image. Uh, let's use the table header rather than the table data for the cell. Okay, then we also need to display the fly. Let's call this fly. Also from and to. But then the aircraft, the airline, let's say first, airline, aircraft, aircraft, okay, and in the end, the distance which should be aligned to right. So this would be the distance. Now, we use jQuery to, it, to iterate through each of the results, so we go to all the flights, with a function which will get a parameter as parameter as the index and the, the object itself, the flight. And this function should collect to HTML a new line. So let's create a new table row. Let's concatenate it to the closing of the table row tag. And in between, <coughs> we will need to, to attach information about all the flights. Okay, so let's create 
this time on your table data. And in here, we'll need to put an image with the source that should be um, the flight dot image field and then we'll have to say set the width let's say that should be 50 pixels and the height of the image to make all the same size should be 25 pixels this is this is the image so we close the first cell then the next cell should contain of course, it is a line left, it doesn't matter, it will be a line as the header. But in the end, we'll need to define a new one, a new cell. Let's copy this. Okay, and the content of the cell should be flight.number, which is the number of the flight. And we will just end this one. Let's copy this. Then flight.from to airline aircraft and we align the distance to the right right and in here should be the distance okay so this is this is the, the application we have now we only need to to run this as a web uh, as a sorry we, we, we run this as um, as okay so uh, this should be run as a Java application I mean so let's run this run as Java application and we have a problem because this when when we try to pass in from the properties file we didn't set something for the port so let's just put 8080 here now when we run this again okay when we run the application again okay so now we run the application again Okay, and we get an exception that the URL property is not available on the message. So if we go to our route, we can see that we have a problem and we have to pay attention. First of all, when we try to invoke the URL of the load balancing instance that was selected in order to get uh, data about the flights, we set the body to be a constant empty and then we are expecting to have the property URL on the body so that's not uh, obviously that's not uh, available we expected to have a load balancing instance in the route but we set the body before actually using that so we need to do this as well now let's try and run the application again okay so now it's invoking uh, the site I'll just load this and as you can see here I have uh, a list of, of flights and this is refreshing actually if you look at the distance value it's refreshing and the flights are sorted accordingly according to the distance to the target so these are the flights which are near Bucharest in a proximity of 100 kilometers so uh, there are a few flights that that are uh, on on a uh, air yeah so this left bucharest and is going to paris that's a taron flight uh, yeah look this is a russian flight okay that was heading to bucharest from moscow and so on so as you can see the WebSocket is running, it's refreshing the data each second and it's getting the information using our integration. So that's all. Thanks.